Our first commentator has been a serious student of the assassination of JFK for more than 15 years. The co-author of The Case for Zapruder Film Tampering, an article which appeared in the edited volume Assassination Science, 1998. His current interests focus on the authenticity of photographs and motion pictures taken in Dealey Plaza on 22 November 1963. This fellow was the first person to identify the indications of a through and through bullet hole in the Alchins photograph. Please join me in welcoming Roy Schaefer. Yeah, good morning. Okay. What I'd like to do, uh, by the way, I thought that was an excellent presentation and, and it did represent a lot of my thoughts. Um, I think the main thing about this is to me, and, and looking at the reason I picked the presidential limousine was, I, in, the, in this case, you have the body. And I think just as important as the body is the presidential limousine. And one thing that occurred that bothered me is the presidential limousine was the scene of the crime. <laughs> it was the, you know, you remove the scene of the crime, you lose evidence. You alter the body, you lose evidence. Now, my, my interest is directed that way in the limousine. Now, but also my interest is in the alteration of the film. And I'm going to say this. And I'm going to say I believe beyond the shadow of a doubt that the, that the Abraham Zapruder film was used as a master. It was altered to change the perception of what was seen. But what I will say that's important is that when that, the, current, the film in its current state from 0 to 486 is in a direct point, uh, uh, exact point at, at, say, just for example, 200. That limousine is exactly on Elm Street at 200 in a specific place. Okay, also the people inside that limousine are at a specific position. So, the Zapruder film, even though I believe it's altered, and whether you don't, that's okay, but the point is it can be used for what I'm trying to present. Now the windshield is very important. And by the way, I scoped that out and uh, I had noticed, uh, I, I'm one of these people that really are, is pathetic, uh, pathetic really, but as <laughs> a Freudian. But uh, I lasered out all the, uh, all the positions and I noticed in, in, the, in Doug's presentation, if you noticed what was, what was interesting was those two lamp posts were not there in Daly Plaza that day. And the lamp post closest to, on, on the video, the lamp post that was closest to, you know, up on the triple overpass, if you t looked at that lamp post again or just visualize it, what you'll see is that's the exact angle going into the windshield. In other words, from the sniper, you go through the lamp post, you got it. Because I've, I've scoped it out, I've taken scope. Uh, the only thing I found is a problem with a scope, unless you've got a large scope, is you probably need at least four seconds to reposition the scope. Now, another thing that I thought was quite impressive. Now, I'm going to also just interject this at this time. I believe there was a person on the grassy knoll by Zapruder, believe it or not. I believe that. And I believe that he fired shots. Okay. Two that I know of. Okay, now, the other thing, if you look at the Zapruder film, and I'm going to have to come around if you don't mind on this. Uh, can everybody hear me? I think I can see from here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this. I'm, first of all, I'm going to go back to, in other words, I'm saying, but first let me do one thing. I want to get this cleared out of the way. Okay. I think this is important, and I just I just kind of want to kind of verify. I don't know if everybody can see this now. On the presidential limousine in the Algens photo, 
the, the spiral that you see has this configuration. Uh, I've, 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 I've actually uh, taken a you know, windshield similar, and this, this configuration is about an inch and a quarter. A 6.5 millimeter is, is about a quarter inch. I'm thinking that they used about a 22 uh, rifle that has, uh, I'm going to say, a 74 Winchester, for example. Now, now, now there's, other, there's other things here, I think, that proves that this is a through and through shot. Not only the photograph of that in, in, in the Algen photo, but this. What you, what you see here, and I uh, didn't quite do that right, is I wanted to uh, do a spiral. And let me, just, let me just redo it so I get it right. There we go. Now, why is this important? This is important because when a bullet, had, a, a bullet fired through a rifle, a rifle has lands and grooves. I know that that bullet going through the front windshield had a, what they call a right twist. And this is the right twist here. That means it went through. That means this indicates there's no doubt in my mind that that bullet transited through the windshield because it has this spiral that picked up when the bullet's turning and hitting this. Okay, now in the regular pane of glass, like in the Commission 350, you don't have that. It's cracked. It's cracked. Okay, it's completely different configuration. I think that's important. Now, by the way, this is, uh, the Algens photo shows this. I believe this to be true. The Commission, the, in the archives, the windshield that they have in the archives, this is their configuration. I don't believe it. I don't believe it because it isn't what's seen in the photo. This is a fabrication. Now, getting back to here. Now, I'm gonna to try to bring some new stuff in here. I, everybody's heard, or I'm sure, I'm sure everybody's heard of the single bullet there. But there's some certain things that are interesting. And by the way, on this here, this is Commission Exhibit uh, 353. And what's significant about this is, although you can't see it in this photo, there's actually two color photos, but I use this one because right here, this is a bullet hole, and it has a blood grouping around it. Now, the other one is right here, and, and, and a better, I have, a, I just don't have the slide with me, but this, but anyway, at this point here is another bullet hole. Now, that, that becomes very important. Now, so let's, let's go back to, say, between 200 and 220. And, and what I'm going to do is just, I'm representative. I like to do uh, reenactments. So I want to show you exactly what I'm seeing, I, you know, in the film. Wait, did you say there was a hole in the seat? Yes, there's two holes. There's a hole here and a hole here. And by the way, I, don't, I didn't have the slide but afterwards, afterwards, this is all cut up. It's commission, exhibit. Uh, let me just get back to that. But at any rate, there's two holes. Now, this hole here occurred at exactly, if you, if you examine the Zapruder film, and it, you can first see it at, at 226, Z226. Now, this is important. This hole over here you can first see it at 285, okay? Now, what caused that? Okay, so let's go back uh, and, okay, I'm saying that, 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 okay, the Algens photo is Z225. I'm gonna use numbers. I hope I don't confuse anybody. But at any rate, at 200, okay, the Stemmons Road sign, you know, in other words, the, the presidential limousine is going behind the Stimmons Road sign. Now, as it's doing this, it, things are not seen, but we can see before and after. So basically, I'm just going to do my representation of Kennedy. So Kennedy's waving, basically, at, okay, at the crowd. 
At 200, if you look at, at, at the Zapruder film at frame 200, there's no bullet hole yet in the presidential uh, windshield, front windshield. Now, at frame 220, however, or thereabouts, you see the bullet hole. So we know that the bullet that hit the presidential limousine occurred between 200 and 216. That's very important. Now, so let's go back. Let's let's get. Is, is this supposed to be up here on this slide? That's supposed to no, be I'm I'm going to I'm going to I'm just going to kind of jump here. You only have five minutes. Okay. So what I'm going I think I can do that. Okay. So what we're looking at here, and this is why it's important. On this here, by the way, this is where Conley is hit at 224. I believe that that's the case. I believe he was shot from the grassy knoll, okay, at 224, okay, and he was shot at that point, okay. No, wait, I'm out, okay. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I messed up. At 224, he was shot, and, and, and this was, he was shot at this point here. Okay, I'm just going to say that now. I got confused. Now, what I want you to realize here is what you can barely see. This is, in other words, uh, this is 224. So let's just use that. So Kennedy's hands are already up in his, 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 his right hand is already raised up. He's hitting the throat. He has to <coughs> cough first. So his left hand is coming up at this point so he can push over the hole to cough and breathe. He can't do it unless he does that. Now right here, this little white object, is this little white object here. Whatever it is, it was on Kennedy's leg. So every, when he's coughing, <coughs> he's raising that leg up. That takes time. So in other words, we got 224, about 220, let's say here, for the shot going through. So we got another shot, and I'm gonna say it's a back shot. And the back shot, I'm saying, uh, went through this cushion and hit him in the back. Okay, now, there's one thing that nobody, I don't think anybody else knows, but at 247, 248, okay, you can actually see blood because when, when your heart's beating, you got a pulse. And after he was hit, I'm talking about Kennedy. Kennedy, the blood is actually seen in 247, 248, you know, misting out of his back. So to me, that proves that he was shot in the back, okay? It also proves that the throat shot's separate, and I think that's important. The, I'm going I'm to leave Conley go. The only thing is, I mentioned 224 Conley shot, but I want to go back to this here, right here. Now, Conley, according to the single bullet there or whatever, and this will probably be just about it. But anyway, it's, it's significant what Conley's doing. Conley, in other words, he's, he, I would say he was in this position here. He flips his hat up. Now what he does is that's a hat, but then he turns around to look at the president. So he's in this position right here. And that's why I'm saying at 224, there's a grassy knoll. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, that's why I got messed up before, and I don't mean to do that. At 285, at 284, he was shot, I would say, from the uh, sixth floor, southwest corner, not the snipers there, the other corner. At 285, what he's doing, and this is just my opinion, check it out. But what he's doing, he's turning. And then, next to the Zapruder, as a matter of fact, in frame four, seven, eight, in the Zapruder film, you can see the sniper. Look, because where Zapruder is, you can see right into where, and in, into the uh, grassy knoll area behind the fence. Now, so anyway, at at, at two eight five, I'm saying that that bullet hit Conley's wrist. You know, the first two two four through his back, okay, out his chest. And, and by the way, when I talked to Willard Hess, I believe the, the bullet ended up in front of the jump seat somewhere. Now, what I'm saying here is when Conley's hit from the grassy knoll, the shot's coming from the knoll. So uh, basically, like this, he's turned around. You can almost visualize this, because Zach Ruder, not wouldn't be too far from Zach Ruder. So his hand's up in the air, and right there's the hole. 
And that first appears at 285, and there it is. Now, what's interesting, the, okay, I, th I think I, think I uh, let me just come over. I, I, I'm going to close on that. I wanted to bring, I thought that was important enough to bring to your attention. And I don't think that uh, there's really anything that's more significant to say. I just think that the, uh, in closing, I just want, I want to just say that I think the presidential limousine was the scene of the crime, and I think it was very important to understanding uh, the scenario of a conspiracy in the uh, death of uh, President John F. Kennedy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roy. Our